Hello everybody, Steve Politi, Key Sergeant James Cratch here at beautiful Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. A 30-0 loss to the Hawkeyes by Rutgers. It, it just looked a lot like last season. That was my takeaway. Offense was inept, the defense was not good enough, but hot damn, when it's time to punt the ball, guys. Adam Corsak Nobody, is a weapon. He is a magician. Pound for pound. Pound, for pound, pound, uh, pound for pound, the best player on this let's team. Let's talk about punting because that's where we're at. I think people are really about really to too. tune off the video. Let's so let's talk about the offense. <laughs> okay, thank and you, how, Sarge, how as visual it was. I mean, you know, first half. Um, there was the a clean. moment. There was a moment in this game, a period of time, where this could have been competitive. After the early touchdown Iowa scores, Rutgers has three straight really strong defensive series. Corsak gets off a bunch of big uh, four punts. The closest Iowa started towards its own, the goal was at the ele its own 11. Yeah. Clay Carter throws seven straight incomplete passes as part of an abysmal day. Second touchdown, 14 0. It's over at that point. This team cannot come back to 14 yeah. I feel like McLean Carter. I just got intercepted by Crash. Yeah, I don't just make my point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just leave the video. Uh, that, was the, the, that was the bad news. The worst news, of course, was he got hurt. Yeah. Uh, so now the one thing you needed to get out of these two games was a quarterback. They don't have it now. I mean, yeah, and, the and the news is we, you know, I asked uh, James Ash, uh, uh, Ash right after the game about it, and he said he confirmed that there's an injury, but he did not get into any specifics whatsoever. Nothing. And we're we're going to be another two weeks of, of quarterback. You know, you know, we'll be McLean Carter, we'll be Johnny Langan, we'll be Art Sikowski, another waffling on the quarterback situation. And and look, in, in a lot of ways, he probably has to go that way because Boston College is going to be the biggest game of, of his tenure. Does it matter? Who plays quarterback? I, I don't know because I mean I think what we like the bottom line is this: Carter played really poorly today. Last week against UMass, everyone got excited. I get that he still threw three picks; two of them were really bad. I I just don't know if they've made a massive improvement over Art. And you know I don't really know what we can take away from Art today because he comes in a game where he's down 20 points, yeah. and it, the game wasn't far enough out of hand that I was ready to call for the dog. So they still got Epinesa in his face every time. Right. Yep, right. This is and if you're going to be fair, like you know. The play calling, we, we, we raved about John McNulty. Bad, uh, yeah. it, it wasn't good. We talked about Sikowski, you know, first drive, it's, uh, you know, a second down run to uh, yeah. Pacheco. You let you put Sikowski, if there was ever a chance that he'd get any momentum, he's facing a third and eight the first time he throws the ball. Yeah. You know, it just, he didn't put him in, uh, in position to succeed. It just wasn't a good uh, offensive play calling. It wasn't good quarterback play. No. They, they couldn't run the ball. They, they got beat in the trenches. It was just, yeah. And another yeah. another Big Ten game where it seemed like the opposing team is just trying to play the, the prevent offense at the end of the yeah. game. And that, that's, a, that's the, the, yeah. as, as bad as the offense was for Rutgers, the defense again get get some stops in third down get them off the field they just they wear they they get worn down you know Iowa wasn't scoring points early on but they were body blow after body blow after body blow yeah. it all stacks up and look I, we joked about Corsak at the start of this video he was brilliant yeah. and the fact that they didn't score a single point when they were Iowa was starting so deep like there's a reason why a punt is an offensive play look if, if, if the the biggest takeaway I think you know this Iowa is not any good. No, Iowa. Yeah, you know, we knew going in, in they're going to have an advantage on both sides of the line. But you know, this is a Big Ten team. They're going to face. Yeah. Last I checked, they're going to face eight more Big Ten teams. And Correct. you know, the defensive line especially. Any, any, if there was any question that this defensive line was going to exceed expectations, forget about I it. I tell you, and that, this, and this, uh, he denied it. I asked Chris. Chris asked if he thought that. You know, he said that well, this, this will not define our season. In two weeks, that game will define the season, no matter what he says. No doubt. You look at what's happening around the country. I mean, Army almost beats Michigan at the big house. You got, I mean, Maryland is just just curb stomping Syracuse in the first year for it. For, I mean, it's like, just. No, yeah, it's, this is the, we now have two weeks quarterback controversy. You know, nine days, Rutgers went nine days without one. It was a fun nine days. It was fun nine, it was a great nine days. Historic nine days. <laughs> this is the biggest game of, of Chris Ash's life. Yeah. yeah. And he's got to win this one, and then, Michigan, you know, it is what it is, the flyer. But then the Maryland game, too, now becomes even bigger. I, I just think this is a season that's about to go off the rails. You, think, they they don't was, you think there was a part of Chris Ash that wanted to actually just, you know, leave the press conference room today and just go right back to Atumwa, which is like an hour and a half away? <laughs> Does anybody really want to go back to Atumwa? <laughs> All right, on that note, <laughs> signing off here from beautiful Kinnick Stadium, Keith Sargent, James Crack, Politi. Catch you next week.